Hello. Well, uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, another Coen Brothers movie. Uh, this one is uh, <clears throat> 25 years old. And that is uh, The Big Lebowski. Um, stars uh, Jeff Bridges as the dude, or Jeffrey Lebowski. Um, John Goodman as his friend Walter. Steve Semi as Donnie. Uh, Julianne Moore as... <clears throat> Maud Lebowski, the daughter of the big Lebowski, and uh, John Turturro as Jesus, uh, as he calls it, though, probably Jesus, but, you know, he says Jesus, but we just have, uh, you know, his word to go off of, so that's uh, very funny. Um, and this is the film that uh, was right after Fargo. And as a result, it wasn't as uh, beloved right away. It sort of, it, this is a cult film. You know, it, it has become such a huge cult following that you could probably go on at length about Lebowski Fest and dudeism and all that stuff. Um, one hand, it's a bowling film. You see, frequently see uh, the dude Walter and uh, Donnie hanging out at the bowling alley, playing. Donnie's a great bowler. Uh, basically every time, except for the last time, we see him, you know, pre pretty much when he's like playing, you know, he gets a strike. Um, and uh, this film is kind of like makes fun of like film noir mystery type films. I mean, like the name itself is like, you know, The Big Lebowski. Um, you know, because there's another Jeffrey Lebowski that uh, the dude gets confused with because they have the same name. And they believe the dude has a wife named Bunny because uh, the, the big Lebowski is like, you know, like a millionaire and all this stuff is going on. And a huge case of trying to find uh, like a... <clears throat> Bunny, who owes money to many people, particularly, like, uh, specifically for this film, you know, uh, uh, or at least the plot, it concerns with the dude, the, uh, a, a porn producer, or, well, at least he did produce porn at one point, but he's apparently doing other things, as he says to the dude when they meet, but, <clears throat> you know, he's, a uh, just trying to uh, figure out what's going on. Was Bunny kidnapped? Was she not kidnapped? Um, you know, as, as Walter, it also do the dude puts it, he, she kidnapped herself, and it's this whole thing. It's like this big mystery, and it's just pretty funny to see on, on Unravel. And also, in part, the film is narrated by Sam Elliott, uh, who we know as The Stranger. Um, you know, um, I love Fargo. I talked about it a couple years ago, when it turned 25. Still love it to this day. Um, and it is my favorite um, Coen Brothers film. Uh, this might be uh, my third. I don't know. It recently came out in theaters. It was pretty cool. Um, for its 25th anniversary. And, you know, it's one of those films, like, you know, that so much has been talked about with this movie. And um, my first experience was when I was around, like, a teenager. <clears throat> Got this, and uh, I just saw it and laughed. <laughs> I, I, I love this film so much, and... Um, Every so often, I will quote it. I will find myself just saying a line from this movie, like, uh, like a, this aggression will not stand, man. Or, careful, man, there's a beverage here, or whatever. Uh, lines like that, that's just... It, there, there are so many quotes, uh, or lines in this movie that are so quotable, and has been quoted for so many years. Um, will probably always be quoted, and it's just uh, a, a hilarious film. 
Um, but, you know, uh, perhaps not everybody will enjoy it. You know, it just depends on, I guess, one's sense of humor for one. And also, if one has seen the previous Coen Brothers films, and especially with coming after Fargo, as many people at the time, they weren't totally sold on this. People thought it was kind of dumb and nothing all that incredible. You know, the dude's a stoner, so not too much, I guess, uh, really inspired there for some, I guess. But honestly, this is a very well-made movie, a hilarious film. Really, really interesting characters. Um, I always like how Donnie keeps getting told to shut up by Walter. And the reason for that was in Fargo, he talked so much and they thought the best thing to do would be to you know have Steve Buscemi come back and then just play a character who barely talks and um and that's what he does but he's hilarious all the same um because of their response you know and a lot of people look at this film and they're like you know this should have been up for a lot of awards of course, that's sort of like in retrospect, when you look at certain films or performances, people kind of look at like this should have been nominated for like an Oscar or two. A lot of people think Jeff Bridges and John Goodman should have been up for best actor and supporting actor at the very least. Whether uh, they would have been nominated had the movie been actually very um, successful upon its first, you know, upon its release. Who knows? Um, but it would have been interesting for sure to see them amongst uh, some of the nominees uh, that year. And um, obviously, like at least like one would have to be <laughs> removed from each category. Maybe depending on uh, the movie or whatever. Uh, maybe some performances might be easier to weed out than others, but... This is a very good film. I definitely see why this is a cult film for sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, Fargo being such a success it, that it was, winning uh, Best Actress in Original Screenplay, it's just like, you know, I no doubt a lot of people had a lot of uh, expectations with the Coen Brothers' next film. And so... And when I guess this film did not meet those expectations, it was just kind of just kind of came and uh, it happened, and then kind of went away for a while, and then there was a resurgence in the popularity of this movie. Um, Peter Stormare is in this film also, as is uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Stormare is a nihilist uh, who was tried to be like you know. You know, get money for uh, kidnapping Bunny, uh, along with Flea and somebody else. You know, Flea is in this film. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman is uh, the assistant to the Big Lebowski. Um, but this is a hilarious film. I think this is a movie that, you know, if you like uh, many of the Coen Brothers films and you haven't seen this movie, it's worth seeing at least once just to see if you'd like it. Um, you know, the dude is more than just some stoner character. Um, and perhaps because of that aspect, there could have been some initially that just sort of wrote the movie off as just being like, dude, a guy follows a, a stoner around. And then, like, things happen, but nothing really seems to have uh, impacted him at the end. Like, no real lessons were learned. At least not that we can tell, but... Uh, you know, there was never a sequel to this film, which is completely fine. I don't think we necessarily need a sequel. Um, also, I don't know what would have happened other than, I guess, uh, more bowling uh, happens and then other antics uh, uh, come about and they just, you know, something else happens, but, you know, you know, 
it's always good to have a, <clears throat> a movie like this to not have sequels anymore. It seems like every so often a movie will have a sequel, whether or not it should. That question really isn't always asked. Like if it's very popular at some point or initially popular, oh, let's have a sequel or two. Big Lebowski doesn't need a sequel. It told its story all at once, and like then uh, well then a two hour time frame, and uh, did it very well. It's just a just a great film, great performances and uh, characters and everything. It's really amazing. Um, I love watching it every so often, and. Uh, being a an major anniversary year, I thought it'd be a great time or a great opportunity to just rewatch this. And I'm glad I did because it's uh, just as hilarious as it has been back the last time I saw, which was probably a year or two ago. Uh, every so often, I just sort of get in the mood to rewatch certain directors' films. And so. The Coen Brothers, uh, something lately, I think a couple years ago, because of Fargo, and so I rewatched this and others, so. Yeah, I don't know if I'll talk about any more. Um, uh, Coen Brothers films uh, in the near future. Um, I could, but I don't know offhand. I have some other movies and stuff I want to talk about, so that's going to happen. But yeah, I hope... This video was sort of interesting to some degree. Uh, ever since I saw it, I enjoyed it. I loved it. Such an amazing film. Great cast. Great writing and direction. Just everything. Uh, I could go on and on about this movie, but um, might be good to, you know, yeah, not do that because... Uh, who knows, this could go on for many more minutes or even an hour or so. And I don't know if I would have enough uh, in me to make like an hour-long video talking about the Big Lebowski. All that interesting on my own. Maybe if I had somebody else to hear to talk to, might be one thing. But uh, by myself, I don't know. It's This is a film I really love, um, really enjoy. I think it's uh, excellent, and uh, I'm glad it has a cult following. You know, some of these movies uh, have cult followings when you look back. Sometimes the timing of the movie is bad, like with Donnie Darko, as I talked about earlier, uh, earlier this year. And then some films, I think like The Big Lebowski, sort of because of expectations, like their last movie before this Fargo uh, was huge won many <clears throat> accolades and then just you know it just because of that this film had a lot to live up to to some extent but because it didn't live up to whatever expectations people had it just didn't you know uh just didn't work for many people. Um, it's unfortunate, but that happens. And sometimes you just gotta take it as it uh, as it comes, essentially. But you know, films like this uh, over time will gain popularity and will have a be a cult film, you know, a cult status of so of some sort. So. It's happy with the Coen brothers with this film. Um, might be able to find it with some other films too of theirs. <clears throat> Happened with Donnie Darko. Uh, Happened with uh, George Lucas's first film, THX 1138. And uh, yeah, because of either the popularity of the director and their work or whatever, in many cases, it's because of the. Uh, People in college watched this movie a lot. They rented it, uh, they owned it, had posters of the Big Lebowski in their dorm rooms. They just watched it, quoted it so much that it just sort of 
caught on and became a huge thing. And it's really cool that uh, like Lebowski Fest is a thing and dudeism is <laughs> it's just it's very interesting and fascinating to see um, uh, what has happened in the years since this film's initial release. But yeah, it's a great film from the Coen Brothers. Great comedy. It's just. Really just uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah. That's really all I have to say. I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all having a great day. And a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time.